I'm Scott Allen Miller. It's the 28th of June, 2023. This is my vlog of daily life living in Leon, Nicaragua. And today I'm doing a recording in the garden because we've been out doing so many recordings out at houses, so many recordings out uh, in different cities, in barrio walks and all that over the last two weeks. I need a day to just chill at home a little bit and not go out if possible and catch up a little bit. So we're going to do one from here. Where we're going to be talking about why you don't want to work in Nicaragua. I know a lot of you think you do, so we're gonna dive into that and explain why you don't and that's you're, you're thinking of it wrong or something. We're gonna get into that right after the bump. I've got some dark clouds rolling in. I hope we get some rain here in a little bit. I'm recording this around about noon. It's lunchtime, and uh, so I'll show you some of the clouds that I'm looking at while I record. It's a beautiful day. A little bit warm, very humid. Uh, so I actually have the air conditioning on in my office while I work today. It is, I'm actually recording on the 4th of July because I'm a bit behind, but we have a ton of stuff recorded already for you. So I get to tell you a little bit about what's coming up. So we're gonna start with that. Uh, up com coming up, we have uh, more houses in Fatima, both the Reparto and the Residencia. I have a scheduled Residencia recording to do that I might do yet today. I haven't heard if they've managed to get the keys. Uh, we have a house in on the beach in Las Benitas that I'm not sure when we're going to show. We recorded that already. We recorded one in Guadalupe, one of my favorite barrios. Uh, we've already shown three episodes in Fundesi. Not sure when we're going to be back there. Hopefully pretty soon because I really like it, but we've covered it pretty well. So uh, I'm going to give it a little bit of a break. And uh, I'm going to be doing in um, less than a week a, a run to the Costa Rican border. So we're going to do a recording probably from the drive uh, just because it's, it's the only thing I have to do for the entire day is drive and record. So I'm going to try to mix the two together a little bit. Uh, and uh, uh, that's kind of the upcoming schedule other than already recorded again is the Ipico uh, de Nagarote. So that's coming up on the episode for July 2nd. So you will see it on the 9th. Uh, so that one's going to be, I think it's going to be pretty cool. I haven't seen the footage yet, but we were, we did a bit of filming multiple cameras. It's a cool parade. Nagarote is the most beautiful city. And as everyone always points out, did you know Nagarote is generally considered the cleanest city in Nicaragua? I didn't know that too long ago. I definitely know it now. And it is a beautiful city for sure. Of upcoming new equipment, we have a little bit of stuff to announce, just so you know. We did order practically on day one, not quite, but really close, uh, the Insta360 GO 3. Absolutely tiny camera, does 2.7K, so it doesn't look as good as this. It doesn't look as good as the X3, but it's really tiny and portable, so I'm hoping that it's gonna be some cool B-roll and it's gonna be able to be used to get into some spots where we just normally wouldn't have a camera. I'll be able to slip it in my pocket, hopefully, and take it with me times that I just normally wouldn't take a camera with me. I'm excited about that. I ordered a new studio light. Uh, for those who don't know, I currently work with a Colbor 60-watt uh, LED studio lamp, which does a pretty good job, but I got that to test it. So I just got the 100 uh, X, which is the 110 watt studio light. So I'm gonna have two, which you really need two in a studio. And that's gonna basically triple my overall light output uh, and, and give me a much better studio experience uh, for you guys. And I have uh, a guy designing and building a cool backdrop for the studio. So the combination of everything, I'm hoping pretty soon I'm gonna be able to realistically do in studio recordings because there's some days where I just get so far behind, I need to be able to do stuff in the studio at night and having a way to do that would be fantastic. So we're working on that and we're really close. So I'm excited, excited about that quite a bit. We're also working on plans. This is a bit farther out. That's pretty fast. We're working on plans uh, to be able to do uh, a second studio meant for video gaming with the kids in a, in our media room. Um, we have a lot of construction that's going for that. It's not nearly as close, but we do have some plans for that. So hopefully a second studio space will be coming up and also ordered, this is kind of cool, is the Hohem iSteady M6 with AI tracking. That is the uh, the gimbal, which it's designed for phones, but it everyone says it works with GoPro, so we're, we're trying it. Uh, it's got an AI tracking system, so it actually has an attached light with 
uh, a scanner that will actually identify me and allow me to do some hands-free stuff uh, for just making the show a bit more interesting. And it should be a big improvement for doing filming in houses, things like that, because we, um, for a couple of reasons, but most of it is because it's dark. Uh, and because we want to get a wide view, the wide view means we can't use the stabilization in the camera. And so the house shows tend to be a little bit shaky. So we want to clean that up. The, the physical gimbal should do an amazing job with that. We should be able to get really steady shots um, and, and still keep the 5.3K at super wide. So we can get much more uh, resolution, much better image than we currently have. The, uh, the AI tracking system also has a built-in light and I need to add my GoPro light to the, to the GoPro, and that should give us a little bit of a better lighting situation just in general. Um, partially, I could do that now and have been forgetting. I'm hoping that the combination of everything will upgrade that quite a bit. So two different use cases, which is why I was willing to go out and get a new gimbal. Uh, the, the extra light, the tracking for interesting new shots, and uh, making it steady for not just my normal shooting, but for uh, the houses specifically. It will make for some interesting, cool, uh, steadier footage for other things. I love having a physical gimbal. The, the, the GoPro does such an amazing job of image stabilization in general, but it is not the same at all. And there's things we can't do. You can only do certain shots with the stabilization. Like this shot is stabilized, but when I do the wider one that, that fit, you can tell, it looks better. Um, there's something about the way the sensor's used. I can't stabilize that. So I'm only able to do that on a tripod currently. With the iSteady, we'll be able to do moving shots with that as well. And I think some of my barrio walks will improve quite a bit from that. Of course, that requires me to carry that out on my barrio walks. We'll see if the weight and everything makes sense. But it's everybody's raving about this unit. So I decided to give it a shot. All right, today's topic, you don't want a job in Nicaragua. Now I get asked this a lot. People are constantly asking me and it's all kinds of weird flower thing under my feet. It's all kinds of different things that people ask me. Some people want to just work in a restaurant. Some people want to work as a hairdresser. Some people want to uh, work in a call center, want to work in a, just you name it. Uh, people are always asking, well, how can I get a job in Nicaragua? And there's, um, so first I want to set some context. The assumption before I say some of the things I'm about to say is that you are an English speaker who is watching this show from abroad. If you're a Spanish speaker watching this translated in Nicaragua, and you, you're a Nicaraguan, this does not apply to you. We're talking to expats and presumably expats who speak English. If you do not speak English, if you do not come from a first world country, if you're coming from an incredibly poor third world country and don't speak English, then realistically moving to Nicaragua may not be something you can do. And if you can, it's going to be a challenge because you're not going to be able to work and you're not going to be able to uh, afford to live in many circumstances unless you're bringing a lot of money with you, in which case you don't care. But if you're looking to work to survive, that's, that's going to be a problem. I don't know any person watching my channel to whom that's going to apply, but just in case, I'm, I'm letting people know there's those edge cases before someone writes in and says, well, what about, and comes up with some theoretical person, but not them. For the realistic, real people who are watching my show who are not Nicaraguans. There's always Nicaraguans watching my show. You're Nicaraguans, you can work here. To those who are coming who are expats from other countries, there are two big factors and you have to internalize these, right? And, and really importantly, don't try to find an exception. This is a thing, people do this in business, they do it, it's a, it's a human reaction. One, we want to be exceptions, and two, we want emotionally what we want. We don't want to stop and think about it. We don't want to be confined by rules, whether they're societal rules or legal rules or just physical pressures of the universe. So we, we look for exceptions. We want to feel exceptional. See my episode, You're Not the Exception. So when you're coming to Nicaragua, two big things. The first is the legal rule. Yes, someone's going to come up with an exception to this, but it doesn't apply to any real people. You are not allowed to work here. If you are an expat, you are not allowed to work in Nicaragua. And you're gonna say, but, and I'm gonna say what I just said, don't use but, except that you are not allowed to work here, okay? The idea that you can be employed, the idea that you can find a job, the idea that you can go out and be hired means the only way you can do it is to break the law. And that means a couple things. One, you're hurting the people you are supposed to be coming here to help. You are not supposed to come here and take jobs away. You're supposed to come here and create jobs or at least be neutral, right? You're not supposed to come here and be a burden on a very poor country. That's wrong, right? Don't do that. Don't try to do that. And I know you'll say, but there's services people need. They, what they need is jobs, right? That's the number one thing. And could there be an exception? Could there be something you're good at and that they need that thing? Yeah, it's plausible. If that's true, if you feel a burden, 
that let's say you're an amazing plumber. I always use plumbers as an example. You have this amazing knowledge of plumbing and you need to share that with the Nicaraguan people. They, there's some plumbing they can't do because you have not shared that knowledge with them. Great, come and volunteer, do it for free. If you have that value, do it for free. And because of the second reason, that'll make sense. But the first reason, you cannot be employed here. So it doesn't matter what buts you're going to say, you cannot be employed here. Can you invest here? Absolutely. Can you run your own business? Absolutely. Can you assist in managing your own business? Yes, technically. That does not mean that you can go be a waiter in your own restaurant. Could you get away with it? Yes, people break rules all the time and get away with things, right? Are there conditions under which you could work unemployed for yourself and actually do some work? Yes, there's some gray area where you can potentially get away with it. Can you be paid a salary for, no, but is there, no. There's no exception to this. You may not receive a salary in this country. You may not be in a situation where you need to pay employment taxes in this country. That's the rule. You have to accept that. That is the rule. If you want to break that rule, accept that you're breaking the rule. All right? Okay, so that's the first piece. You're not allowed to. The second piece is it doesn't matter if you're allowed to. There's no condition under which you want to. Okay? This is really important at least from a financial one, right? I get that emotionally you want to, that's why you're asking the question. I get that it may seem practical. Well, I'm, I'm getting bored otherwise. Nope, go volunteer. There's lots of ways to not be bored in this universe. And if the only thing you enjoy, and trust me, I get it, I love to work, right? If you love to work, and that's the only thing that's gonna keep you satisfied, then by all means, go out and volunteer. Add to the economy. Teach someone how to do the things you do. Do the things you do for free, give it away. Don't be bored, enjoy your life, great. Don't try to make it a salaried or a paid by the hour or paid by the job, job. Don't do that, right? It's not, it, it's not appropriate and it doesn't make sense. Now, why doesn't it make sense? Let's say that the Nicaraguan government suddenly had plenty of employment had no issues hiring more people and said, okay, expats are now completely welcome to work in this economy. You can get a salary, just pay your normal taxes and, and good to go. What if they said that? You still would not want a job. Why? Because the income rates here in Nicaragua are fractional compared to the rates outside of Nicaragua. Minimum wage in the United States is, depends on where you are, somewhere between about nine and fifteen dollars an hour but let's just say ten dollars an hour because it's an easy number to work with that means you're bringing in at a minimum uh roughly seventeen hundred dollars per month if you're working 40 hours a week minimum wage in nicaragua is just under two hundred dollars a month i don't know the exact number it was 186 when we moved here it's moved up it's in the 190s uh it fluctuates a little bit because of the exchange rate and because it does move from time to time and it's different by industry but very roughly it's just say two hundred dollars so $1,700 is minimum in one, $200 is minimum in the other. If you were to take a job here at $200 and you speak English, it is guaranteed you could take a job somewhere else and make more money than $200 per month simply based on the fact that you speak English and nothing else, right? That is all it takes to make more than $200 a month is f fluent English. So it wouldn't make sense to be working at a bare minimum here for anybody because at in the context that I gave at the beginning, because you could always make more money working somewhere else and doing good for the economy rather than taking a job out of the economy. If you could take a Nicaraguan's job away and make $200 a month, or you could make $400 a month working remotely and bring $400 into the economy and not take someone's job away, that would be beneficial. Maybe that's not enough money to justify you working, maybe it is, but it's certainly enough that you're creating a positive cash flow for the country rather than a negative one, or at least a neutral one. And that is why it doesn't make sense. There's always, yes, in theory, in some ridiculous hypothesis, there's some way you could come up with a person who simply ha is so unemployable that if they were to do manual labor in Nicaragua, that would be more than the zero they could make somewhere else. In theory, it's a pretty rough theory. In reality, any person who is employable in Nicaragua would be employable somewhere else for equal or more money, but do so 
at a tax advantage. Remember, if you work in Nicaragua, you have to pay taxes. If you work outside of Nicaragua, you do not have to make you do not have to pay taxes, right? If you're working, if you're an American, you're working for the U.S. a U.S. company. If you're Canadian, working for a Canadian company. You're British, working for a British company. You're you're European, working for a European company. In none of those cases do you need to pay income taxes, at least after your first year for the Americans. Everyone else right away. So you have not only do you have a higher pay rate and you have this huge financial advantage to your employer. While we can't hire people in the country at this price, they can always get you cheaper because your cost of living is cheaper and you don't have to pay taxes. And you don't have to pay taxes on it. Look at this dog. What is she? Why? Why? What is wrong with you? There's always, there's so many advantages to working a job from your home country and so many disadvantages beyond just being illegal to work a job in Nicaragua. There's no condition under which you should, from any financial evaluation, ever let it cross your mind that this is something you would ever want to do. If you want to work in Nicaragua, something is wrong with the factors you're thinking of, right? Now there are exceptions, but there are exceptions for Nicaraguans. Right? I know people who have come from the United States and work here and do so, but there's a whole bunch of things. It, may, it makes it sound like, oh, they did it, doesn't that? They're Nicaraguan. They just happen to have been coming from the United States. They aren't really working here. They're investing here and creating jobs. They're going back and forth and working and actually making their money in the United States and just doing some of the work here. It's very complicated, but it is not coming here and taking a job. Coming here and taking a job does not make sense at all. I cannot possibly overstate this. You will never, in a lifetime of talking to people, ever find an exception to this, given that we're talking about people coming from English-speaking countries that speak English and have the right to work in their home country. If you're somehow a refugee with no right to work in your home country, you just need to work somewhere. Okay, I get that. Those are, that's not the scenario we're talking about. Of the expats who watch my, watch my show, who are like, I want to move to Nicaragua, what do I do to find a job? You don't. You absolutely never mention it again. Just done. I, you got to take it out of your mind. And I say this like this because so many people are obsessed with this concept that they're going to make money by working here. If you want to invest here and start a business, that's risky. It's hard. But please come invest and help the country. If you want to come here and work remotely for jobs in the US, jobs in Canada, jobs in Europe, anywhere, Right, and bring money in and have the tax advantages and the low cost of living and help the economy and maybe create jobs in either. Yes, please come work. There are ways for you to work remotely and be super valuable to your home country because you're cheaper and working from a better location and super valuable for Nicaragua because you're bringing in income that didn't exist previously and better for you because you're making a high income foreign with low cost of living and not paying taxes. You have so many advantages for all three parties. Everyone wins when you do it one way. If you do it the other way where you've got to pay taxes, you have to get low income in a low cost of living country the only advantage you have is being in a low cost of living country. You don't have all the advantage, you're giving up all the huge advantages that you as an expat have. Every Nicaraguan would kill for those advantages. Why would you give them up? And if you're so wealthy that you would consider it, just volunteer, just work for free, whether it's teaching people, and if you want to, let's, I'm gonna use, uh, someone had mentioned being a hairdresser. I'm gonna use that example. A hairdresser here might make maybe $1 an hour, maybe and that would be uh actually that'd be pr pretty reasonable about one dollar an hour is about what they make because they'll generally work on their own maybe a dollar ten right because <clears throat> they'll, they'll come in at minimum wage but they rarely get to work full time so a dollar actually would be quite good so if that's what you want to do right set up uh, a youtube studio and and make a youtube channel about hairdressing in nicaragua um, make a a gofundme page do a any number of things that allow you to volunteer as a hairdresser set up a school and do that for free and film it and sell classes or whatever right find a way to make your your 199 dollars per month from the u.s tax-free be ahead of the game don't take any jobs away in nicaragua everyone wins there are ways to do the things you want to do and there are ways to make the incredibly small amount of money that we're talking about potentially being able to earn getting a salary in the country. If 
your desire is to physically work and, and do those things, then yes, you could open your own salon. You could hire people to do that. You could spend your time training them instead of working directly. Would you make money? I don't think so. I think you would lose a ton of money. But if that's what you really are passionate about and really want to do, by all means, don't feel you can't do it. But do it in a way that is positive, not a negative. Absolutely, beyond a shadow of a doubt, the idea that you will come here and get a job. And, and so many people have mentioned so many different jobs over the last year or so. Every one of them, there's someone here doing it for a roundabout minimum wage. There are people looking for those jobs. Every single one of those jobs has people who wish they could get more of that work here. And every one of them, there's no way that they will ever legally allow you to do that. So look at working here off the table, just off the table, but you can work from here. This is, and this is why it's so crazy. Working here as a direct employee in the country is one of the least sensible ways to make money you could possibly imagine. I know you could go to Malawi and it would be worse, right? There are countries with lower income and fewer jobs. This is not the worst economy in the world by any stretch. Haiti would certainly be worse and that's not that far away. So even locally, there are places where it would be harder to work and make money, but it is really, really rough. No one who speaks English is coming from a place where you can't make more money more easily. So you would never choose this as a place to work. Conversely, very few countries on earth are as unbelievably friendly and promoting of working somewhere else while you live here. That's the big draw. So in one situation, you're opting, you're, you're, when people say they want to work here, they're opting into the, about the worst possible work scenario that they can come up with, not the worst, but pretty close, and opting out of coming from one of the best potential work situations, the whole reason that people choose Nicaragua, I mean, it's safe, it's beautiful, it's, there's lots of reasons to choose Nicaragua. But for expats who are looking at the big picture, pretty much they're looking for safe, low cost of retirement, that's one group, or those who are interested in still working are looking at a place that is so friendly to business, both foreign and local, and being able to work remotely for other places that pay much better and not having to pay taxes on it. That's why people choose Nicaragua, that's the draw. Don't opt out of all the benefits and don't opt into the things that people are scared of having happen. Choose the path of success, figure out what that looks like for you. I get some people have jobs that are very difficult to do remotely, very difficult to do whatever, but if you speak English, think about what your job options are. The job options here don't exist. They're gonna pay extremely little and you're gonna be breaking the law to do them. That's, that's a bad combination for anybody, right? Think about all the immigrants going to the United States, illegal immigrants, who go to the United States and take jobs. In the United States, there are surplus jobs and people are excited to be able to pay someone less than minimum wage and everyone breaks the law and it's a terrible situation. Now take away all the advantages of that system, make it a country where the pay is much lower, the risk of the illegality is much higher, and the benefits of there's extra jobs doesn't exist. It's it was a bad situation in the first, first place. It's a really bad situation once you switch that up. Don't become part of that system. Don't, don't desire to be part of that system, right? The thing that I want people to take away from this, everyone to take away from this, is a strong understanding that any and all desire, I'm not saying you're gonna try to do it. I'm not saying you're not gonna research it. I'm saying the desire to look into it should be eliminated. You should have zero desire for such a situation to arise. If someone said, do you know you could work in Nicaragua? You should say, well, why would I do that? No, that's crazy. I don't want that opportunity. I want to live in Nicaragua. I want to work somewhere else if I have to work. If I don't have to work, then great. I don't want to have to work, I want to retire. But if I have to work, I absolutely want the money to be coming from the US, from Canada, from Europe. I want to live in Nicaragua, help the economy, help the people make the best difference, get my best life, help them have their best life, everybody wins. That's what I want. Build that into your emotional reaction. Hey, we got an idea for a job, how you could work here. Nope, I don't wanna hear it. That would be crazy, I have no interest. I have plans to figure out how to bring my money from somewhere else and live here. Everyone's happy, we win. Thanks for joining me. Please remember to like and subscribe. Got comments, questions? I know, you're gonna be like, but there's this job, I want it. Go ahead, put it down there. The answer is going to be, look at these two rules. How does this not fall under the, but let's do it. And someone's gonna ask, well, what about this job? What does it pay? They pay about 200 to $300 a month. No matter how much expertise you have, nothing pays very much. Um, it's just how it is. 
the things that, that do pay a little bit more are call centers, are for people who speak really good English. In theory, if you wanted to be a call center worker and somehow you were allowed to work here, you could make quite a bit more money, $600, $700 a month. That's real. That is still, you could still do that job in the, uh, do it remotely for the U.S. using your U.S. Uh, or whatever, Canadian, European uh, uh, working papers and make more. Right, so you still wouldn't do it here. Even the best case scenarios, you still would benefit by not being uh, officially located here because there's companies, if nothing else, they will pay more to be able to say they have American workers. If you're working illegally in a call center, they have to claim you're a Nicaraguan worker. That doesn't benefit them. They want to be able to say they have Americans. They want your American accent. They want you to be able to say, I'm from Cuba, Missouri, right? They want that stuff and have it be credible and, and people from the US have that advantage. They're gonna pay extra for that. Don't, don't opt out of those advantages. If you'd like to support the channel, you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. If you're looking for assistance on relocation, info at relocatenicaragua.com. Share on social media, tell your friends about the show, and I will see all of you manana.